Okay, guys, Zoom is messing up, so I will be doing it like this. I'm going to show you my um, actual teacher's workbook where I underline the most important things, and I suggest you do the same. Um, I'm going to try to hold it still so y'all can see exactly what I have. Um, you probably will be seeing these things later. Um, so we'll get busy. This is Chapter 2, Phlebotomy. Chapter two, as you see, I have underlines and stars, and that's what, I, when I'm teaching, that's what I want y'all to do as well. I'll tell you what's underlined and starred. Here it is for you. Um, this chapter is a lot about vital signs, a lot of things. Since um, some of y'all are already coming from the health system, you should know a lot of this where you wouldn't... Um, have to learn so much of this chapter, but we'll start. Um, blood pressure is the pressure exerted by circulating blood upon the walls of the blood vessels. That is our answer to one of our questions coming up soon. It is the blood pressure or blood pressure is the pressure exerted by circulating blood upon the walls of the blood vessels. Without further specification, blood pressure usually refers to arterial pressure of the sy systemic circulation. Um, it actually varies between your systolic, which is the top number, which is your maximum number, and the diastolic, which is your minimum number. And you will see when we put it and wrap it around the arm, the first heartbeat you hear will be your systolic, the second diastolic. Due to pumping of the heart, the resistance to blood flow in blood vessels, um, blood pressure decreases as it moves away from the heart. Of course, you got more pressure at the heart, and then as it goes from the heart, it decreases. Your blood pressure decreases as it goes away from the heart. Blood pressure drops most rapidly along the small arteries and arterioles and continues to decrease. All that they're trying to say is continually decreasing away from the heart. Valves, gravity, and pumping from skeletal muscles can also influence blood pressure. So if they asked you what can influence uh, blood pressures in different places in the body, valves, veins, in your veins, gravity, and pumping. Blood pressure measurement without specification usually refers to the systemic arterial pressure, and they're just saying again, where we do our blood pressure is we wrap it around the brachial artery, which is at the person's upper arm. And the normal measurement should be 120 to 80. That is our normal number. On this definition of systolic and diastolic, all I want you to remember is systolic is when the heart is contracting. And diastolic is, is when it's in relaxation or dilatation. Dilatation is their, one of their favorite words. That's what I want you to remember. It is in relaxation and dilatation. Vital signs, most um, importantly, pulse we are talking about here. you got to know your vital signs. You may be that phlebotomist has, has to take vital signs and then pull blood. Um, we know that a person's heart rate can change during activities. Anytime you're doing anything um, that would make you breathe different, that's going to change your pulse. A uh, person's pulse can be found in any place that allows the artery to be compressed against a bone. That's one of your questions coming up. A person's pulse can be felt at any place that allows your artery to be compressed against a bone. So it should be compressed against a bone. That's the easiest place to feel an artery. And there's arteries everywhere. One, the one big ones in your wrist, that big one in your neck, we always used to check when, when it really starts pumping when we're exercising. And our brachial artery is the one we check and wrap around when we do our blood pressure. That's your brachial. Um, to have an accurate vital sign or pulse, you should count them for a full minute. Um, don't let anybody ever tell you any other thing, but um, because the most accurate is counting for that full minute. Do not count it with your thumb because the thumb has a pulse of its own. Why don't you count it with your thumb? Because you can actually feel that pulse in your thumb and it can make you have inaccurate results. Anything below 60 beats a minute is bradycardia. Um, 
Those that have stars by, you need to remember they will be seen again. Um, but always remember what bradycardia is means that your heart rate drops below 60. A newborn um, beats per minute, 120 to 160. You'll see that um, often they're checking your newborn's heartbeat, and that's what they want to see, 120 to 160. Um, then it gradually decreases, actually, as you grow older. 6 to 12 years of age, 75 to 110. 13 and up, 60 to 100. A lot of times doctors will tell you don't even report to me unless your heartbeat is over 110. It really depends on where you work. Um, some want to know when it's over 100. It really depends on what they're doing, um, what their baseline was, what they normally are, and what they are at that time. And it really depends on your place of work, too, and mostly depends on their baseline. And then athletes, it's 40 to 60. The more um, active you are, the more healthy you are, your beat, heart beats slower So, because it doesn't have to work as hard. Abnormal or irregular heart rates can be causes by many factors, so all of those things listed there can cause your heartbeat to change. Anxiety, stress, caffeine, nicotine, overactive thyroid, exercise. We all know exercise increases your heart rate and hyperventilation. Fever, along with a high fever, comes a high pulse. Um, that goes hand in hand. Next page. We're going to talk about our blood cells. This, some of these first few chapters are your basics of phlebotomy. This is your book work you have to know. Your skills are actually doing the sticking. This is actually your um, book work. Um, again, you see all my highlights, underlines, and stars, and I literally have them there for you. So make sure if it's underlined, starred, um, highlighted, we know that that's going to be seen again, maybe on a test, maybe somewhere. Those are all your clues. Um, blood cells, also another name is hematocytes. So it's another name for blood cells. That's all of the blood cells, not just a certain type, but they're all called hematocytes, hematocytes. Um, as the blood is removed from the body, the blood clots, and the fluid portion is called serum So or serum. What is the part after the fluid portion is removed or the blood is removed from the body? We call it serum. Now, let me reword it. I'll just read it exactly how it works. As blood is removed from the body, the blood clots and the fluid portion is called serum. So we should know that the fluid portion is called serum. Blood is a fluid needed to maintain life or a stable state. What's another name for stable state? Hemostasis. Hemostasis is where we want to be at a stable state. Then it's going to circulate all through your arterioles, arterioles, veins, venules, and capillaries. Arteries being your biggest all the way down to your capillaries, which are your littlest. Blood is made in the bone marrow, underline that, which is the soft material in the center of bones. Bone marrow produces 95% of blood cells. And other organs, such as your liver, spleen, lymph nodes, help in regulation of your bone cells, of blood cells, sorry. The formation of blood cells begun, begins in the bone marrow as stem cells. Stem cells is actually the beginning of any cell, and here it is your bone cell. As the stem cells mature, they evolve into red blood cells, white, and platelets. Another name for platelets is thrombocytes. In the human body, there are three different kinds of blood cells. Here we go, red blood cells. Another name is erythrocytes. Y'all should be familiar with some of this through your definitions. White blood cells, which are leukocytes, and platelets. So they all have another name to remember. Just depends on where you're at, what they're talking about, uh, what tests they're talking about, which words they may use. Um, the three types of blood cells make up 45% of your blood tissue. So your blood cells make up 45%. Your fluid portion, which is also called plasma, make up 55. Those are important numbers. They'll keep on asking you. 45 makes up the blood cells of blood tissues, and the fluid part is 55%. Also know that blood makes up 8% of your body weight. 
So 8% of your body weight is blood um, itself. Um, also, no, very important to know that blood volume is in, in the average adult is about 5 liters. And that is our average adult, 5 liters of blood. Blood also has a pH level. We want it to be between 7.35 to 7.45. We know that the lower the pH, the more acidic it, acidic it is, the higher it is more alkaline. So we want to remember those numbers as well. 7.35 to 7.45, very important in phlebotomy. The function of blood is to carry materials to the body tissues. One of the most important ones is oxygen. It carries all of everything, really, all the way through your body. That's what they do. One of the most important we know is as oxygen. Blood also has the function of carrying material away from the body tissues. Of course, it carries carbon dioxide, which is waste of the cells, and waste from the cells. We're going to specifically talk about your red blood cells. Red blood cells is also known as erythrocytes. Keep, keep remembering erythrocytes, red blood cells. They deliver oxygen to the body. Also remember that a red blood cells have no nucleus. No nucleus in a red blood cell. Um, red blood cells are the major, body's major way of delivering oxygen to the body. Erythrocytes contain hemoglobin. Know that definition. Hemoglobin is an iron-containing pigment that gives red blood cells their color, and it binds oxygen. So that is how our red blood cells carry around oxygen with hemoglobin. So you've got to have both of those together to carry your oxygen around. Um, the, if, they have a no, if a person has lower number of red blood cells, we call it anemic. And a lot of people are familiar with anemia. That is why they call it anemia, because they have lower red blood cells. So they can't carry the oxygen around as, as good. And that's why they tend to be a little uh, colder, too. Know that their lifespan is about 100 to 120 days. Um, I have a lot of important stuff on these papers. I just want you to make sure that you focus and focus on your underlying stars and everything like that. There are three stages of a life cycle of your red blood cells. You've got erythropoiesis. Erythro, we already know, the red blood cell. Poiesis is making the red blood cells. So erythropoiesis is the process of development in which new red blood cells are produced. They mature in about seven days. So how long do they mature in? Seven days. And you have two million red blood cells being produced per second. Is that not awesome? Two million red blood cells per second. The developing red blood cells, those are what I call the baby red blood cells. They are called reticulocytes. You will see that again. A baby red blood cell is a reticular site. Again, their lifetime is 100 to 120 days after they've lived and done their thing, run around with all the oxygen they can run around with, and they have to um, die or go away. They call it senescence. The senescence, all that means is the removal of old and defective cells. And it's also called eryptosis. Eryptosis. And they die or are removed at the same rate they're made. So they die at 2 million per second as well. So then we're making 2 million in erythropoiesis, and then we are breaking down 2 million in erythropoiesis, or reptosis, sorry. All right. For our white blood cells, the other name for that is leukocytes. What they do, they are cells of our immune system, and they defend against diseases and foreign materials. So it's just like our cleaning system, our leukocytes, our white blood cells, are our immune system that keeps out stuff we don't need. There are several temp different types of red blood cells, um, all developing from a cell in the bone marrow. And they, again, it's the stem cell, and they call it a hematopoietic stem cell. All that means is that it's making... Hematopoietic is making blood cells, and a stem cell is actually uh, the start of the cell. Now, unlike red blood cells, underlying white blood cells have a nucleus. Red blood cells do not. White blood cells do. 
Also know that they contain 46 chromosomes in their nucleus. The white blood blood cells can be uh, differentiated in two different groups, granulocytes and lymphoids. Just know that. Don't go digging too much there. There are two different groups, granulocytes and lymphoid, and they are further broken down in proportion. You got neutrophils, lymphocytes, monocytes, eosinophils, and basophils. I need you to remember what they do. You will see that again. When we do a CBC with diff, of course, the CBC is complete blood count. And what are they counting? Your red, white, and platelets. So if they say a CBC with diff, it's just a same thing as a CBC. They just really break down those differentiations of your white blood cells there. They break down your neutrophils, lymphocytes, monocytes, eosinophils, and basophils, and you need to know each one of those. Neutrophils, they defend against fungal or bacterial infection. They are the ones that uh, help you form pus. Um, when when um, you have something going on, infection going on, and you get pus, that is your neutrophils. Lymphocytes, um, they produce antibodies that bind pathogens. So a pathogen is an infectious organism, so that is, again, eating the bad stuff. They're grouped into B cells, T cells, and NK cells. Lymphocytes are grouped into B cells, T cells, and NK cells. A lot of those um, T cells, they'll count for an uh, AIDS patient. Your T cells have to be at a certain count. Um, then they'll call you um, that you're actually in AIDS. Or before that, they just say you have HIV. Monocytes um, are larger. They kind of, anything macrophage or phage at the end of anything means eating. Esophagus, kind of the same thing. Yes, yeah, where you swallow. So anything phage at the end is a swallowing, eating. So a macrophage, that's big. So it's eating stuff that we need to be a. Eosinophils, they come out when you got a parasitic infection. Um, and your basophils come out pretty much when you have some kind of allergic reaction or allergic response to, um, and it releases histamine, which causes you to itch. Basophils um, are, are responsible for that. So remember all of those. Back or to your platelets. Platelets are also known as thrombocytes. Their function is to stop blood loss. What do thrombocytes, what do platelets do? They're the same thing. They stop blood loss. And the other name um, or what I want you to associate with your platelets is coagulation or blood and clotting. And I keep saying that um, in our little reviews we've had. Uh, coagulation, blood clotting all day long. Um, do not forget that. That would be tested in your Bluetooths. The average lifespan of platelets is about five to nine days. So what's the average lifespan? Five to nine days, which is a lot shorter than your red blood cells. If a person is, has inefficient, inefficient amount of platelets, they may have excessive bleeding. And that's what we're checking when we do um, pull people's blood. If they're on blood thinners, they will bleed more. So we all have to, we will have to check them. Um, a normal blood specimen in that tube, it usually takes 30 to 60 minutes for blood to clot. That is because it's in that tube. You know, normally if we were bleeding, it wouldn't take that long to clot because our body will stop a, a blood leak is what we'll call it. Um, but in the tube, it takes 30 to 60 minutes. You'll see that again. There's a hormone called thrombopoietin. It is um, produced by the liver and the kidneys, and that's what I want you to remember there. Um, platelets develop in bone marrow by forming off microcarocytic cells. The process is regulated by your hormone called thrombopoietin. So 